Ruby team. Today we're going to work on the access project for chapter one. Um, the instructions tell us to start access and download the access file named Exploring A1. And we do that by going through our course in Blackboard, clicking My IT Lab, and then going into My IT Lab Access Chapter 1. Let's get there. All right, we're in our course and we have Access Chapter 1, which we're going to click on. And then the top is Student Resources. You've got your e-textbook there by chapter. You have PowerPoints about the textbook and videos to help you. Where we want to go right now is our Access Chapter 1 assignments. Each week you'll have a reading quiz, and that's over the reading. It's multiple choice. You have a simulation activity, which is in a pretend access environment, and then our grader activities. That's where we're going now. We're going to go to our grader activity, and we're going to download this and get it started. So I'm going to click Start. You have three attempts. I'm going to download materials, and you'll see where we have to then follow the instructions and complete the assignment. I suggest going ahead and logging out of my IT lab at this time. Complete your assignment, then log back in. You'll browse your computer and upload the closed completed assignment. Then you'll say Attach, and finally you'll click Submit for grading. So you can download both files as zip files, or you can download them one at a time, the instructions, and then I'll show you what downloading the Access Database looks like. I save it into my folder for my class, and look how it calls it Student Exploring. I'm going to go ahead and save now, and I already have the instructions opened up for us, so we're good to go there. And um, here is our Access file. You'll see that it's named Student Exploring. I'm going to go ahead and suggest that you rename it and keep this raw file. If you make a mistake, start over with this. Anytime you have access, you have to enable content. Basically, you have to tell your computer that you trust the content. So we're going to go ahead and enable content and say that we trust it. And then we're going to go ahead and go File, Save As. And this time, I'm going to save as back into the same place on my computer. Um, like I told you, I have a folder on my C drive that's for South Plains and that's for our class. Okay, I even have it labeled all the way to Chapter 1. What I'm going to ask you to do is to write up here in Student, go ahead and change that to your last name. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put both names because I've been working on the file before, but I want you to know that it looks like my last name, Exploring AO1 Grader, and I say save, and I have to enable content again, and I'm ready to go. Our second instructions say open the speakers table in data sheet view. So I wanted you really quick to look over here on the left side and see that we have all our access, access objects. We have tables in several of them. We have queries that ask a question across those tables. We have forms that fill information in from the tables. And we have reports that are a great way to print out and communicate with people about your data. We're being asked for a speaker table, so we know right away we need to open the Tables tab in All Access Objects. And it's asking us to go to Speakers, which is the last one. And I'm going to double click Speakers. When I double click it, it opens it here with a tab. This is what we call Data Sheet View, but become familiar with the views in Access. Clicking View Design View looks different and talks about how the information is entered in our table. Coming back here and again clicking View and going back to Data Sheet looks a little bit more like Excel. And just like Excel, we can click between those columns and make them easy to read. On the Data Sheet view, use the search to locate the speaker P014. And by the way, that zero is the number zero, not the letter O. I apologize for saying that. Our search menu is down here at the bottom, and we're going to type capital P number 014. And as we do that, you'll notice that our highlighter comes down and highlights Mary Miller, our speaker ID that is P014. 
and that's what we were supposed to do. We were supposed to search to find that speaker ID, change the first name from Mary to Marahuana. So I'm going to click right in Mary. I just clicked once. Then I'm going to highlight Mary and just type Marijuana. All right. And now it says change the last name from Miller to Heineck. So I'm going to click Tab. And you'll see how it highlights that part of the name. And I'm going to go capital I, H-I-N-E-K. And look, you'll see a pencil right here. The pencil means that we've made changes or are working in this record or this row of material, but it hasn't been saved. Once I hit Enter or click another cell, that information will be saved. And now it's in our table. Okay, so I just wanted you to see that and see that that pencil is now gone and marijuana is Heineck is all entered information is entered our next question was to sort the table in ascending order by speaker ID so we can come over here to our speaker ID which is basically probably our primary key that accesses set and ascending order means A to Z so we click the pull down arrow and we go A to Z, short, smallest to largest. And when we do that, it renumbers with number one first and number 16 last. And now it says close and save the table. So we will right click the tab and click save. There's always lots of different ways to save. You can also close the table by hitting this red X, or you can keep with your right click and hit close and be done. Now we're in step three. Open the speaker session query. Query is a different object in all objects, so we want to open our queries and look at that. And it says find the speaker session query. So to do that, I'm going to double click and open my query. So we have speaker session query with a tab right up here at the top. And it says apply a filter to identify the sessions with Cynthia Ashley or Holly Davis as the speakers. And it's going ahead and giving us a hint to use a filter by form or the tab. So when I sort, I normally, and I'm sorting for a name, I click in that person's name and um, the names we want are Ash Cynthia Ashley and Holly Davis. Let's click in Cynthia. We're gonna come up here to advance and we're going to filter by form and we're going to do an advanced filter by form and sort. And what we want to do is filter by speaker ID, right? But speaker ID last and first name. So I'm going to grab the last name as a field and the first name as a field. And then I want to sort first by, um, by the criteria Ashley A H S L E Y and that was Cynthia and our or I also want to sort by Holly Davis so I'll try Davis and when you type the name and then just click tab it will put the quotes around for you and then we're gonna do Holly you do need to make sure you you type it correctly and press tab and now we have our sort um, now it's asking us to sort our filtered results in ascending order by session ID we have not added session ID so we're going to come up here and grab the session ID field drag it down below and let go and then we're going to click in our sort row and we're going to sort ascending by session ID and now we save and close the query so we're going to right click and save it's going to ask us to name the query and I'm going to name it speaker session goodness it's Davis and Ashley and Ashley and I'm going to go OK. And um, then it asks us to close the query. So now you can right click and close.